Hello there friends, welcome back to the channel. It's Evelyn here as usual and I'd like to give you a huge thank you for continuing to support this little creativity corner of the internet. This week I'm really really excited to finally be able to share with you my final version of my Liz dress. Now those of you that have been following along on the channel will know that this charm patterns pattern has been one of my favourites for a very long time and I'm finally going to create a final version. If you've missed me creating a mock-up here on the channel then I'll pop a card above to that. I've really taken time and patience to make sure that this garment will fit nicely nicely before cutting into my final fabric, the most gorgeous John Calder cotton sateen. Now, if you'd like to see a blog post about this fabric, please head on over to my Minerva blog and there will be a link in the description box below this video. I'm so, so excited to share this with you, my friends. And please, if you haven't done so already, hit that all important subscribe button and come on over and follow me on Instagram too. But Without further ado, let's get to some sewing. To begin, I'm going to prepare all of my fabric, starting by laundering it to prevent any shrinking later on when I'm laundering the garment. And speaking of laundry, my absolute favorite way to wash my me-made vintage creations is this, soak. This amazing laundry hand wash smells incredible and doesn't require any rinsing. It's super gentle, even on the most delicate of fabrics, and it's effective in even cool water. I highly recommend. When my fabric was washed and dried, it was time to give it a good press to get rid of any creases. This is also the perfect time to look over your fabric as you're ironing, checking for any flaws. You don't want to sew that beautiful project to then find out that there is a flaw right on your bodice front. I speak from experience. Then it was time to get cutting out. I made sure to use really sharp pins to pin the pattern pieces. I didn't want any chance of snagging this beautiful fabric. And grabbing my trusty fiskars, it was finally time to cut the fabric. I'm going for the gorgeous John Caldor cotton sateen fabric for the main part of the bodice, the shoulder straps and the skirt. And for the bust piece and to line the bodice, I'm going to use this white premium lining fabric, which is also from Minerva. I'm unsure yet if I'm going to line the skirt, but if I do decide to do that, I'm going to make a simple rectangle gathered skirt from this fabric to line it because the Liz skirt pattern pieces are huge. I'm still undecided yet as to whether I'm going to do a pleated or unpleated bust. I love the unpleated version on my mock-up but I also love Gertie's full pleated version here. I'm thinking that part of my indecision is a reluctance to attempt those pleats, but we shall see. I might create one of each to see which I prefer. Time to get sewing. And the first thing I need to tackle is to underline the pieces that need it attaching the underlining to the fashion fabric using a basting stitch within the seam allowance. And the second I started sewing, it felt like everything was just right. The tension on my machine was perfect straight off, the lining and fabric combination was excellent, and the size 70 universal needle that I'd chosen for the project was just right. I just love it when a plan comes together. Then it was time to get constructing, beginning with the darts in the back bodice pieces. Before sewing the centre front and side fronts together. And then the side front and backs. 
and my bodice was looking gorgeous already. This fabric is a bit brighter than I usually go for, but I'm so, so glad I went for it. Then I started work on the bust piece, starting by joining the lower cup pieces. And then stitching on the upper cup pieces. There are a fair few curves involved in this part with the lining, so just take your time, be patient, make use of those pins and clip into seam allowances if needed to make the pieces fit smoothly and neatly. And now onto the cup outer layer, and after creating the lining pieces, I decided to go for those pleats after all. I began by pinning the pleats in place. Test your fabric before you use pins here to make sure that they won't leave a mark after you press. And to say I was happy with how this looks is an understatement. I was practically giddy about it. I don't think I've ever created such neat pleats or matched them so well at centre front. Happy, happy. On to that shoulder strap, but not before a cuppa with Luna. I began constructing the straps by pinning and stitching the lining and outer front straps together at centre front. Then joining the front and back straps at the shoulder seams. Placing the two large pieces right sides together, it was time to get pinning. Pay careful attention to the charm patterns instructions here, making sure to place the shown notches and circle marks on your pieces so that you know where to pin and stitch and where not to. And after much trimming, clipping and pressing, the strap looks like this. Next, pinning the strap to the lower bodice and bodice back neckline. Again, take your time here to match notches and seams. Stick to Gertie's instructions and you cannot go wrong. And once they're sewn together, you can really see your dress begin to materialise. Continuing on the bodice, pinning and stitching the bust piece into the lower bodice. Take care here to make sure that all those layers are lying nice and flat so you don't get pinches and puckers. Total honesty here my friends, I got puckers and had to go back over this. Twice. Don't despair. Bodice lining time. Grabbing the bodice lining, I flipped the bust shelf down onto the lower bodice before pinning that lining all along the lower edge and up and around the front and back necklines. This is definitely the trickiest part of sewing a Liz dress for me. My top tips here, make sure that those straps are tucked out of the way of your pinning and be certain to carefully mark those circle points where your pieces meet and your stitching needs to stop. The clearer those marks are, the more likely you are to hit them first time and have a successful strap. But my friends, don't panic if you have to make a few passes here. Even our lovely Gertie confessed to having to restitch some points a fair few times. So don't give up, keep going. And after a fair amount of clipping once more, notching and seam grading, my bodice looked like this. Time to tackle the skirt, beginning with the pockets which I zigzagged all around to prevent any fraying. 
then it was time to pin those pockets, one to each side seam of the front skirt piece and to the two back skirt pieces before stitching them in place using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Then pressing those pocket pieces out towards the seam allowance. Grabbing all of those skirt pieces, I pinned the backs to the front, right sides together, all along the side seams and around the pockets, then stitching at 5 8 of an inch, effectively creating secret pockets that don't show from the outside of the garment. And this is my ultimate favourite way to sew pockets into a dress. Magic! Now that my skirt side seams were sewn, it was time to run a line of gathering stitches along the waistline and pull on those bobbin threads to get the skirt waistline to match the bodice waistline. I did decide to line my skirt in the end, so created a simple rectangle gathered skirt from the lining fabric, which I gathered together with the outer skirt before joining to the bodice. To neatly finish the inside of the dress with a lined skirt just like this one, Gertie uses my favourite method, stopping the gathering stitches two inches before the edge, keeping the lining and outer skirt separate for this two inches to enable you to stitch the outer skirt and outer bodice layers together, allowing you to later hand stitch the edges of the skirt neatly to the zip once the zip is inserted for a super neat finish. Wonderful! Before inserting the zip, I stitched the back seams of the skirt layers below where my zip would finish. And I created the waist tie too. Time for that zip. I inserted a lapped zip, which I always hand tack into place first. And after that, all that was left to finish this dress was to slip stitch the lining carefully along the inside of the zip and at the waistline to conceal the seams. It's finally reveal time. And with the sunshine making an appearance, out came all those lawn mowers. Oh well, you'll just have to make do with this footage my friends, and a voiceover. 
I cannot begin to express how much I love this dress. I had an idea of how it could look, but I never really believed that I could pull it off. Time to believe in my skill set and abilities, maybe? Perhaps, my friends, perhaps it's time. When I chose this fabric, it was a break from the usual muted colours and pastels that I usually go for, and I'm so, so glad that I went for something brighter and bolder. This fabric was a joy to work with, and I'm definitely going to be making some more dresses with cotton sateen in the future, and this certainly will not be my last Liz dress, because I adore it. It just goes to show you my friends, believe in yourselves and you never know what you could end up creating. But until next time, stay safe, take care of yourself my friends, bye!